All right, where do we go next? Let's go Canadian Catholic. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know if she was going to say that. <laughs> Canadian Catholic, welcome back to the show. How are you? Hi, uh, it's an honor to be back, both uh, you, Jenna, and uh, Matt. Hi. Uh, very nice hosts. <laughs> awesome. So what have you got for today? Like, sorry. So here's what I would like to say. You know, both of you are ex-Christians who became atheists. Mm -hmm. And I was in the same boat. And I like to say I'm kind of one step ahead of you now. Mm. Because I yes, I'm, a, I'm aware of that. And, and we had this, this is what got us off on the wrong foot last week. Um, because I'm not convinced that we were in the same boat, nor am I convinced that you're a step ahead of us. But go right ahead. Okay, so you know my story. I deconverted from being a committed Christian. Um, it was a more of a fundamentalist form. And uh, I became a full-blown atheist, an inner circle atheist. I was into it. I was reading books. I still talk with David Silverman, you know, people like that. Do you think that and that's what makes you an atheist? No, I lacked belief in I, God. I don't, okay. I don't know. I still don't know what an inner circle atheist is. <laughs> um, and I will, I, would, I will ask you to not mention David Silverman again for fear that I will say something about that piece of shit. Um, excuse me. So inner circle atheist basically is a colloquial term that for someone who was, you know, in the inner circle who understood inner workings of atheism, it's just a colloquial I use. Okay, what, what are the inner workings of atheism? Because my view, and you'll have to forgive me because I'm only the guy who's been doing this show for 15 years and has been, you know, running around on stage with, uh, you know, Dawkins and Harris and everybody else. <laughs> I'm not aware of any inner workings of atheism. Atheism is simply the position of not being convinced that a God exists. Oh, sure. I, I agree with that. I, I just meant, uh, you know, there are atheists who become atheists when they're disappointed with their church. And there are atheists who become atheists because of logical reasons and who make a conscious decision that there is uh, little evidence for God. That's the camp I belong to. I consciously became an atheist. Right. Okay. I, and I agree that that there are atheists who become atheists for bad reasons and atheists who become atheists for good reasons. But what that what that seems to suggest is that you've found good reasons to believe in a God now. Yes, but I don't want to pursue that line where we just go into preponderance of evidence. I would just like to concentrate on one point on how my view has changed and maybe hear your view on what's your view. Okay. Is that fine? Okay, so when I was an atheist, one of the biggest hurdles to returning to religion was this issue of afterlife. Because I used to think, for example, that all the evidence seems to suggest that consciousness is purely physical. When a child is small and its brain isn't developed as well, it is less conscious than someone whose brain is developed well. So that was one of the Ooh. biggest. Yeah. How so do you know that? Not only is that not, so I would agree that huh? the evidence shows that consciousness is a product of the physical and huh? that everything we know and understand about consciousness seems to end with a person's death. But I don't know that I would say that a child is less conscious than an adult, less mm -hmm. cognitively mm -hmm. uh, or uh, less knowledgeable. I mean, they, they could have incredible cognitive uh, capacity. But yeah, I, I think that, that that argument that a child is less conscious, mm -hmm. that's so flawed. Either, either, there was different reasons, but basically you understand, I used to think just like you, that consciousness is purely an emergent property of the physical workings of the brain. I, I will correct something. Please. It's not that I'm asserting that consciousness is merely a physical product of the workings of the brain. It's that I don't see evidence that anything else, that there's anything else contributing to it. And I don't know how one would demonstrate a supernatural component to anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Yes, so I probably went one step ahead of you back then, and I used to assert that all the evidence seems to suggest a purely physical origin for consciousness. Because when we were to look how you can manipulate the brain, this used to be a huge hurdle for me in believing in afterlife or anything transcendental. It, it should be, but mm -hmm. so whether or not you went a step further to, to assert that the brain is in fact purely physical, that may have been an error, but I have no problem saying that based on the available evidence, there's no reason to conclude that anything beyond the physical is required for- So I would, like to now, I would like to now share my perspective on how it has changed, okay, how my view has changed. Sure. I've become a devout Catholic now. I'm into Roman Catholicism. I am uh, all of it. I love the Bible. I love Catholicism. 
And, uh, you know, I never thought that I would be a member of religion ever again, let alone such a highly structured and organized religion like Roman Catholicism. And it was a surprise. But I'll tell you, like, I can't tell you the whole story. Let's just start with something small, how my view changed about consciousness. Yep. Okay, go for it. So what I started realizing personally is if you were to look at the brain, it essentially is a highly complex machine, right? A natural machine, biological machine, but machine nonetheless. Mm -hmm. So if I were to look at a cockroach's nervous system, a cockroach, for example, is, um, you know, it has instincts that help it survive, evolutionary mm -hmm. instincts that have developed that help it survive. But it, it does not really have anything that can be described as consciousness. Okay? Um, um. So yeah. You're saying that a cockroach isn't conscious? Yeah, not in the way we are. Well, okay, I would, so maybe we're, we're having a problem with divide, defining consciousness because quite often, and bear with me for a moment here because this, this might be slightly lengthy, mm -hmm. there, quite often what we refer to as consciousness is simply a notion of self-awareness and the, and the possibility of self-reflection. Then there's the, the other thing, which is a little more difficult to define, which is sentience, mm -hmm. um, which is a, a, a pronounced self sense of self, I uh -huh. would suppose. So the fact that a cockroach, uh -huh. um, I would argue perhaps has conscious agency, even if it is merely running on instinct and intuition, mm -hmm. um, in the sense that it's it's an agent and it will, you know, like it can move away from the heat sources and, and light sources and things like that. And so however rudimentary the programming is within the brain uh -huh. to look at human beings and suggest that ours is so much more advanced that it's something special is something that I cannot do uh, for the same reason. Argument. That was not where I was leading. I, I know. Well, I don't know that, but I mean, for the same reason, I can't rule out whether or not a computer created by humans could ever achieve sentience, consciousness, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. So to just continue what I was trying to say, um, the conscious, the only the consciousness that I'm talking about is the ability to be self-aware, not simply have memory that helps you survive, but to be able to be aware as these processes happen. So my problem was here is where I started thinking if if you have a cockroach right, and the cockroach has a system, it allows it to escape, it allows it to recognize where there is danger to feel some sort of, you know, sense of uh, fear, maybe some primitive sense. And my issue was if you made that mechanism more complex, that cockroach brain, you would have a more complex way of achieving the same instinct driven, um, you know, Goals. But sure. at no point that, do you reach a point uh, where um, this mechanism becomes aware of itself. Okay, and see, here's yeah. where here's where we disagree. Uh -huh. Because I don't know how you can have a self-preservation instinct without a sense of self. And it may be that the thing we're, we're in disagreement about is what is often called a theory of mind, where uh -huh. human beings have not only a sense of self, but have the ability to think as if they were another agent. So like I can, I can sit here and say, what would, how would Jenna answer this call had I not been sitting here? I can think in those terms. And this is what, what human beings do in the sense of this sort of intentional sense, to put yourself in somebody's brain to figure out what their intentions are towards you. Now, that's certainly different than merely a sense of self, which you would be required. So there'd have to be some awareness of self in order to have self-preservation. And so if that's what you're talking about, that cockroaches don't have a theory of mind, uh -huh. I don't know how you can get to, the, to say, ah, cockroaches have a, a program uh -huh. that has a self-preservation, but there's no way to increase the complexity of that to then achieve a, a, a theory of mind. I don't know how you can make that assertion. Well, my point is that if you make something like a cockroach's brain or nervous system more complex, you'll achieve the same things in a more complex way. Oh, no, no, no. See, that, that I don't necessarily agree with because I don't know how you can say 
that our brain isn't just a more complex version of exactly what the cockroach does. I mean, again, you could say that, but there is no physical point at which we can say after this complexity, the brain becomes aware of itself. Uh, okay. So just because we don't know what that point is or if that point uh, exists doesn't mean we can rule it out. And you are apparently ruling it out. You are saying no matter how you know, no matter how complex, if you began with something like a cockroach's mind, you couldn't ever get to the sort of theory of mind that humans have. And I don't know how you determined that you can't do that just because we don't know. That would seem to be a sort of argument from ignorance. There is no mechanism of action that shows such a thing as possible. That you know of. Yes, but... It, why do we need to assume such things if we already do not? Understand? We're not assuming. We just don't rule stuff out just because we're unaware of it. And that seems to be what you've done. You have said that you, you have reached the conclusion that there's no way to start with like a cockroach's brain, increase the complexity and wind up with a human's brain. And I don't know how you can reach that conclusion while you simultaneously acknowledge that it is based on the fact that we don't know of a ne mechanism that would allow it. That is a fundamentally the same as saying biological evolution cannot happen because we didn't know the mechanism for it. No, I understand what you're trying to say, but it's also a different uh, think, I do think that you could increase the complexity of a cockroach's brain to reach the complexity of a human brain. But what I think, the, where I think the physical uh, evidence points to is this, that if you increase the complexity of the cockroach's brain, you make the cockroach do the same things in a more complex way. It will be able to escape better. To so, feel pain. So, so I tell you what you need to do then is go do that experiment to support your hypothesis, which is all you have. Yep. So, so your perspective on, on the brain still remains a physicalist position? I, I, am, I have no evidence to lead me to that there's anything more than the physical. I understand, but here's, let's put aside the physical supernatural distinction for a second. And here is, I, 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 I'm aware there are many other callers, so I won't take too much time. I'll just make a point really quickly. Um, here is the way I look at it. The way I look at it is that the consciousness is related, the mind and the consciousness is related to the physical brain, but it's not the same. It does not, it's not. Prove it. Yeah. Prove it. Right? Why Prove do you see it. it that way? This is, so here's the thing. You, you've, you started with an interesting hypothesis and you've done nothing to demonstrate it other than to say we don't know of a mechanism that would allow this and use that spurious reasoning to serve as a foundation that led you ultimately to Catholicism. And so what I'm saying is if you think that you have this, this hypothesis about minds and neural networks, then you should work to prove that and demonstrate it and not just run with it because you can't think of any, any way that it could happen. But that, that's a failure of imagination. That is definitionally an argument from personal incredulity. Um, I disagree. What I think uh, is that when we look at it, right, uh, when, when we observe the evidence, at least we have to be open-minded to the possibility of the consciousness being something that we that we currently cannot explain in terms of physical. Wait, what I, evidence I am, are you looking at? Hang on. I'm absolutely open to that. I'm saying that I don't get to conclude that until you present the evidence for it. He said you, when we look at the evidence. You, you don't get to pretend as if I've closed off the possibility that there's something more than the physical when I've repeatedly said that I have no evidence that something more than the physical is needed or has been demonstrated. I understand, but could it be... I don't think you do understand. You keep saying you understand, but I'm not convinced that you do. Prove you understand. No, I totally understand. I was in your shoes. Like I said, that, I was... No, the, I don't think you I were in his shoes. I swear I'm getting ready to hang up on you again. Prove that you understand. Yes, I know what goes through your mind right now, and I... Whoa! Goodbye, wow. Captain Jackass. <laughs> I can read your mind, Matt. <laughs> I know exactly what you're thinking right now. <laughs> I can read your mind. I'm a step beyond you. <laughs> Now, this is the guy that I hung up on last week. <laughs> gave him a lot more time this week. I, I gave him a ton more time. What, tried to get him to recognize that he had an interesting hypothesis. How would we go about proving it? 
and that my position is not you are incorrect in your conclusion. My position is your foundation does not lead to your conclusion. Identified fallacies, and all I got was, I understand, I understand. No, you don't. Please demonstrate to me that you understand. Oh, I know what you're thinking. I was where you were. <laughs> Stop thinking you're beyond everybody else when you're fucking not. This is really simple. We don't have a full understanding of consciousness or anything else. A lot of things. And if, in fact, there's something beyond the physical, that would need to be demonstrated, not just assumed. And if you're assuming it because you look around and you just can't find a mechanism to explain why humans have a theory of mind and cockroaches perhaps, by the way, do not, because how did you prove that cockroaches don't have a theory of mind? And how do you demonstrate that this isn't, that, that a theory of mind, the ability to take on the intentional stance of another thinking agent, is something that can't be reached through an increase in neural pathways. I'm wondering how you can prove that a cockroach isn't self-aware. Yeah, well, I, I think that they would have to be because right. I don't understand how you could have self-preservation without some sense of self. Yeah. Because it's not like you, like if we created a little wind-up mechanical, like gears and everything, cockroach, and, and gave it instructions, a little robot, we could program the robot to take actions. But only with something like a computer-type brain could we give it a proper sense of self... Mm -hmm. uh, self-awareness. Self-awareness <laughs> to allow self-preservation. Mm -hmm. However, at what point is there consciousness? Mm -hmm. At what point is there sentience? At what point do... do this, is, this is the arrogant view of humans. We're not special. There's no evidence that we are special. There are, there's evidence that we are superior at some things and inferior at other things. I can't run as fast as a cheetah. I can't survive in a number of different landscapes like some other animals. I can't regrow limbs the way a starfish can. And so we pick the things that are significant about us where it appears that we are better. Mm -hmm. And we look at those as if, oh, this is the pinnacle of evolution. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, we shouldn't say evolution. We are clearly <laughs> designed differently and better. We're special. And I would agree that there is something about cognition, that there is something about the thought processes that humans are capable of that is superior to every other living thing on Earth that we know, and it is clearly beneficial. Look at it, all the humans. <laughs> is it the most important thing? I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's one of the most important things to us, surely. And yes, it's a big advantage. It puts us at the top of the food chain despite the fact that we're not the fastest or the strongest or any of that stuff. But when you say you can't get from a cockroach to humans, you're basically denying a fundamental fact of evolution because you might as well have said that you can't get from the foundations of biological life to modern humans. And yet, as a Catholic, as he is, Catholics are generally fine with the teaching of evolution, although most of them probably think God came in and tinkered a little bit to make human beings Adam and Eve special. are apes. <laughs> and, and that's probably essentially where he was going to go, is if you can't get from A to B without a God, then God came in and did something with our genetics that made us separate from the other great apes. And that argument fundamentally boils down to an argument from personal incredulity, which is just... I cannot imagine how we got from one of the great apes to this intellectually superior great ape. And yet, instead of comparing us to cockroaches, why don't you compare us to the other great apes? Why don't you compare us to our chimpanzee cousins, who have clearly a sense of self-awareness in addition to self-preservation, who have group dynamics, who have a sense of, of fairness and have a theory of mind and can com learn to communicate with human beings through sign language. Why is it that you have to set up human beings versus cockroaches in order to say there's no way to bridge that gap? Why aren't you drawing it between human beings and our cousins? Ah, because if you did that, you'd have to acknowledge that there's only maybe a little more ability here, but nothing foundationally different. And then you would have to compare our closest cousins to their closest cousins with lesser cognitive ability. And you would have to do this in this staggering little thing. And you know where you end up? Something like fucking cockroaches. And yet, 
you're, you're reaching this conclusion, it just can't happen. Yeah. It's a fallacy. And so as I suspected, while he was an atheist, uh, who an, an, ins, inner working. an inner workings <laughs> atheist. By the way, if you're one of the inner workings atheists and you haven't reached <laughs> out to contact us here at the Atheist Experience yet, why not? What do we do to irritate you guys? <laughs> how, how do I get in that club? I want to be an inner working atheist. I know. I mean, it seems, you know, I'm on the board. I'm on the president here at the Atheist Community of Austin. <laughs> I'm on the board of directors for American Atheists. Um, I'm at conventions all the time. I'm going in December. I'm going to go spend a week in the UK for the Cambridge Skeptic Society's uh, 10th anniversary event. You're in the unholy trinity. I'm in the unholy trinity. <laughs> How the fuck am I not in the inner circle, inner workings atheists? I mean, yeah. clearly they're afraid of me. Hey, never, I don't know. I'm terrified. <laughs> All right, where are we going next?